Good evening, everybody. I've had a lot of questions over a handful of videos, just people asking questions about what my settings are and what did I use for fill in the blank. So I figured I'd take a minute or two and, and go through all the equipment that I've got, what I tried to use for each piece, and even some of the tools that I had to get specially for the job that I needed to do. So with that, let's get started. And so if we start out of the arrays, I have 11 455-watt Solar Ever panels that I picked up from Santan Solar. And then I have 12 100-watt Renogy panels that I've purchased over the last year and a half from Amazon. Well, moving down the line into the utility room, I've got And ignore the horrible wire job I'm working on cleaning things up and getting things proper but right now it's still kind of a mess uh, I've got a, a junction box cover right now but my arrays come down into these 32 amp uh, DC rated breakers that I picked up from Amazon I've actually had these from my 12 volt setup. So that's the only reason that I have 32 amp breakers in here as opposed to either 20 or 25 because I believe the 6500's maximum input is 18 amps. Um, and I just have this cover on right now because I need to rework and actually install the box. But I got this cover or this box uh, from Amazon as well if it's nice for having four sets of double pull breakers. Uh, moving from there, we come up to the inverters and I've got the two 6500 EX inverters that I picked up from Signature Solar. The wireway, wire trough, raceway, what have you, I picked up from eBay. It was one of those best offer deals that I ended up picking up a uh, four foot, four by four section of wireway, which I, again, I wish that I would have gotten a larger one, both in, in size and length. The, the blue conduit and pieces I got from Menards, the battery cables, all, all the battery cables, I ended up picking up from Amazon from, from various uh, stores based on the size requirements that I needed. Uh, coming down, I've got two Class T fuses here. One I believe is a 300 amp and one is a 200 amp. The 200 amp I had from my 12 volt system. Uh, one of them I believe I picked up from the Alt E store and the other one I got from Amazon. Bus bars, 300 amp bus bars that I got from Current Connected, as you can see. They come down to my shunt, my Victron 500 amp shunt. Got that from Amazon. It's along with the uh, buck converter here, which goes from 48 volts down to, I have it dialed down to the five volts that my Raspberry Pi needs. And the Raspberry Pi, I picked that up from eBay. I have this running solo resistant. Moving over to the battery disconnects in my disconnect box. Again, the same box that's being used for my PV. But here I have uh, two 125 amp breakers, DC rated that for a thousand volts. And I am breaking the positive and the negative to completely isolate the batteries when I need to do any work on them. Uh, I should probably, 
planning on updating these because again I had these from my 12 volt system but I need to update these to probably 200 amp and I picked up those breakers from Amazon as well uh, my battery bank is not an EG4 bank they are uh, Shenzhen Kishu or that I picked up off of I think it was Alibaba after watching and, and doing some reviews from Off Grid Garage, watching him, uh, I had picked up some of the cells from my for my 12 volt system to start with. I figured it'd be a whole lot easier to try, start with the 12 volt than the 48. But I picked up what is it, 32 cells from there. And I am running two JBD BMSs, the two amp balance BMSs. I mean, I like my little battery cover. If you like this one, you'll love this one right here. <laughs> Wanted to make sure that they, they could never touch. So and those are my the main components that I've got. I mean, it's a very simple system the distribution panels over there are picked up from one of the box stores uh, a lot of my THHN cable came from either Menards or eBay uh, I found a ACDC just supplier that's fairly local to me some of the specialized tools that I ended up picking up uh, I picked up a, a crimp tool specifically for crimping ferrules and I also got a, a pack of miscellaneous ferrules for different sizes. Um, I picked up an MC4 tool to help cut and crimp my own MC4 cables so that I don't have to worry about buying the exact length. So I picked up this and the MC4 uh, connectors and I got the cable off of Amazon as well picked up a, a container of lugs of various sizes same thing with uh, terminal connectors see so most of this stuff I ended up uh, picking up on on Amazon just because it's easy to find I had initially started with this crimper for crimping my battery cables and it was from one aught up to oh what was it 8 gauge from one aught to 8 gauge and that worked great on my 12 volt but once I ended up getting to needing some larger cables I had to I had to step it up and get a hydraulic crimper and this is it's okay um, I mean it goes you know from whatever a 500 MCM is all the way down to 8 gauge and on the smaller ones it seems to work fine on the larger ones it seems like you have to use the one size smaller crimp because it doesn't want to bite down on the crimp itself I could go through and shave down some of the sides of the crimp just so that I get a good bite but it's all right uh, miscellaneous cables came from either eBay or Amazon depending on the type of cable that I was looking for I think a couple of spools of the smaller THHN I got from uh, Menards probably but I mean all in all there's not a whole lot to it uh, battery power supply a variable power supply I think that goes down from 
a volt or two up to 60 some volts at five amps. And you could kind of ignore ignore that right now. I'm, I'm actually testing something else with that. Not, not a whole lot uh, of stuff. The other question that I've had is, is what do you have your setting set to on your inverters? This is my, my phase two inverter. You see I'm in grid bypass right now. So I'm just gonna go through this real quick. Um, you can pause the video if you wanna see what each one really is, is set to. There's no guarantee that any of these are actually right. These are just the settings that I have things set to right now. And I have gone through and actually made changes. It seems like every week I'm making a change uh, from one setting or another, just trying to test things out, see if I can figure out uh, why this is doing this or how I can improve on that. So, like I said, none of these there's no guarantee that these are actually right. It's just exactly what I have set to right now. And both inverters are mirrored and uh, set to the same thing. So a lot of the stuff that I have is actually stuff that I have seen other people use in their own systems. Uh, case in point, the, the wire way. I saw in David Paz's videos, I've seen it in the engineering, engineer 775 uh, videos. The initial layout of uh, my my wall right here actually came from watching Will's video on how to set up a 48 volt system, and that's the same place that I got the idea for the uh, Dewalt rack. He's using it for the 48 volt server rack batteries. So I picked up this the Dewalt rack primarily because. This wire rack here that has a, all my old 12 volt system on it. I initially was thinking that I might be able to use this same rack for my 48 volt system. And even though the wire rack is rated for the proper load, I still don't trust it. So I wanted to find something a little bit beefier to put my batteries on. Uh, I got the idea for the batteries from from Andy at the Off Grid Garage. So, a lot of these different a lot of these different pieces I have just put together from watching other people do their own installs. If you want to take a look at another install in progress, you can take a look at Average Joe's channel. He is doing his. Powerwall 2.0 using uh, lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells and redoing his his own battery connections for his inverter setup. I believe he's using a grow watt. I don't know which model grow watt it is, but he's been using that for a little while and it seems to work well for him. I'll leave a link in the description for his channel. You take a look at engineer 775's channel he's a uh, uh, installation company and he does videos on his installs and that's actually in watching his channel that's given me a lot of ideas on how to m make changes to my environment so I'm looking at some point to changing out the wire way and I need to like I said earlier fix the solar lines coming in so lots of little things so i'll link down to his channel as well and i'll also link to the the other channels that i mentioned earlier uh david paz off-grid garage 
uh, Will Perales. But if you've been looking at solar stuff for any period of time on YouTube, you know those names. And you probably know them well. So I will try and compile a list of all these different pieces and, and parts and everything and put them down into the description below so that you guys can see what I'm using. If it can help somebody, great. Uh, just keep in mind, I'm not a professional, I'm not an electrician. I know enough to be dangerous. I know for a fact right now there's some things that I have done that are not up to code. I know that I'm going to try and bring some of it up to code as much as possible. But there's probably some of it that's just not going to be. So if you don't really feel comfortable doing some of this stuff, uh, Talk to an electrician, talk to a solar installer, see if they can help you out. Uh, all this stuff that I learned was doing it on my own and doing years worth of research, just trying things out. So I hope the little walkthrough of the system helps. It's still a work in progress. It's still far from where I want it to be, but I've gotten a lot of questions about you know what I use, so I figured I'd put it in one spot that should hopefully be able to help somebody out. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Y'all have a uh, great night. You stay safe and stay warm now that we're in winter time. And we'll catch up with y'all later.